Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Rex Hewerman? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing you by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the alleged crimes, then offer my analysis. Rex Hewerman was born in 1964 and grew up in Massapequa Park, which is on Long Island in New York. His father was an aerospace engineer. In 1981, Rex graduated from Burner High School in Massapequa. In 1990, he married an office supply company executive. Rex had a daughter and a stepson. In 1994, Rex established his own company called RH Consultants and Associates. He worked as an architect. Much of his work was related to helping clients navigate New York City codes and negotiating with the buildings department. Rex lived in the same house where he grew up. The house was described by neighbors as a dump with overgrown shrubs and wood in the front yard. Rex was not friendly toward or well-liked by his neighbors. Between 2014 and 2022, Rex filed four lawsuits in New York against drivers who he claimed had hit him with their vehicles. Rex complained of serious and permanent personal injuries. Between 2010 and 2021, Rex was the subject of six tax liens filed by the IRS. He had owed over $425,000 and repaid about half of it by 2022. Now moving to the timeline of the alleged crimes. On May 2, 2010, a 24-year-old woman named Shannon Gilbert went missing while she was engaged as a sex worker in Oak Beach, New York. This is about 20 miles from Massapequa Park. Shannon had made a call to 911 at 4.51 a.m. after fleeing from a client's home. She told the operator that somebody was after her and trying to kill her. In December 2010, while searching for Shannon, the police found the remains of four other women. All of the women were sex workers. They became known as the Gilgo Beach Four. 25-year-old Maureen Brainerd Barnes was last seen in July 2007. 24-year-old Melissa Bartholomew went missing in July 2009. 22-year-old Megan Waterman went missing in June 2010. And 27-year-old Amber Costello went missing in September. 2010. Between March and April of 2011, the police found six additional sets of remains, four women, a female toddler, and an adult male. The police believe that the murders were carried out by the same offender. This unknown killer was referred to by many names, including the Long Island serial killer and the Craigslist Ripper. In December 2011, the police found the remains of Shannon Gilbert in a marsh in Oak Beach, Investigators believe that she was not murdered by the Long Island serial killer. So her death led to the discovery of these murders, but she was not part of that group. The investigation into the Gilgo Beach murders went on for many years without success. In January 2022, the police made a renewed effort to investigate the murders and would make an important discovery about two months later on March 14th. A witness to the disappearance of Amber Costello had identified a first-generation Chevrolet Avalanche as a vehicle which may have been operated by the killer. The police realized that a black Chevrolet Avalanche had been registered to Rex Hewerman at the time of Amber's murder. Investigators decided to take a closer look at Rex and used over 300 subpoenas, search warrants, and other legal processes to obtain evidence. On July 13, 2023, the police arrested 59-year-old Rex Hewerman in Midtown Manhattan. He was charged with three counts of first-degree murder and three counts of second-degree murder in connection with the deaths of Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello. The authorities said that Rex is the prime suspect in the death of Maureen Brainerd Barnes, and they expect to resolve this case soon. It sounds like Rex is in store for further charges. 
Rex pleaded not guilty and was ordered to be held without bail. He is facing multiple terms of life in prison without the possibility of parole if convicted. Now moving to my analysis. Rex's attorney called the case against his client extremely circumstantial. He said that Rex was in tears and said, I didn't do this. The state obviously feels differently. They believe Rex is guilty and that the evidence against him is overwhelming. This brings me to the question, is Rex the notorious Long Island serial killer? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Rex Hewerman is guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. Rex lived in Massapequa Park. The victims were believed to have disappeared from this area. The police found evidence connecting Rex to burner cell phones, which were used to contact the victims. Maureen Brainerd Barnes was contacted using a burner cell phone on July 6, 2007. The last known location of her phone was in Midtown Manhattan. Again, Rex worked in Midtown Manhattan. Melissa Bartholomew disappeared on July 10, 2009. She was contacted that day by a burner cell phone, which traveled from Massapequa Park to Midtown Manhattan, so the area where Rex lived to the area where he worked. Later that same day, Melissa's cell phone traveled from Midtown Manhattan to Massapequa Park. A few times in July and August, Melissa's phone was used to place taunting calls to her sister. The caller admitted to being the killer. Melissa's phone was in Midtown Manhattan, very close to the office that Rex used when these calls were placed. Megan Waterman was contacted by a burner cell phone on June 5, 2010. She disappeared the next day. The last known location of her cell phone was Massapequa Park, not far from the house where Rex lived. Amber Costello was contacted by a burner cell phone on September 1, 2010. This phone connected to cell towers in West Amityville and Massapequa Park before traveling to West Babylon near Amber's residence. Late on September 1 or early on September 2, a male client showed up at Amber's residence. Amber perpetrated a scam on this client. She had somebody pretend to be her outraged boyfriend and chase the client off while she kept the client's money. The male client was described as looking like an ogre, having dark bushy hair, wearing 1970s style glasses, and driving a Chevrolet Avalanche. The burner cell phone that had been used to contact Amber initially was used to send a text message to her after she perpetrated the scam. Within two minutes of sending that message, the phone was in Massapequa Park. Later on September 2, the same burner phone was used to contact Amber from Midtown Manhattan. The phone traveled to Massapequa Park, then to West Babylon. Amber was seen walking out of her residence for the last time. A cell phone possessed by Rex had been used in some of the same areas where calls were made from burner phones and had some of the same travel patterns as some of the burner phones. Rex was connected to some of the burner cell phones because he accessed email accounts that were connected to the phones. He was also captured on video at a cell phone store in Midtown Manhattan buying additional minutes for one of the burner phones. Investigators found a curious pattern as far as the timing of the murders and the travel of Rex's wife. This made it seem like Rex committed the murders when his wife was out of town. Rex's wife was in Iceland when Melissa was killed, she was in Maryland when Megan was murdered, and she was in New Jersey when Amber was killed. Rex used an email account to conduct several internet searches. He appeared to have an interest in individuals under the age of 18, sex workers, and sadism. Rex also made searches related to serial killers, the Gilgo Beach Four, and the investigation into the Long Island serial killer. For example, he searched, why hasn't the Long Island serial killer been caught? Why could law enforcement not trace the calls made by the Long Island serial killer and unsolved serial killer cases? Hair found on three of the victims was matched to Rex's wife. The police have not suggested in any way that she was involved in the crimes. Rex's wife was out of town during the murders. The police believe that Rex transferred his wife's hair to the victims. 
Rex's DNA matched a male hair found on Megan Waterman. Moving to the exculpatory factors, there are no witnesses to the murders, no video, another person who traveled between Massapequa Park and Midtown Manhattan could have been the one who used the burner cell phones, which were not directly connected to Rex. The Gilgo Beach Four selected a hazardous occupation. They had contact with many potentially dangerous clients. Rex may have used their services, but somebody else could have killed them. That's pretty much it for exculpatory factors. When considering the evidence, do I think that Rex is guilty? Yes, I believe he is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. However, at the time of making this video, he maintains the presumption of innocence. Moving to the next section, here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, based on information available about the investigation, it appears as though the breakthrough in this case came from the police discovering something which was already in evidence. Presumably, they knew about the witness report of a Chevrolet avalanche for many years. Some people have been critical of the investigators in this case. It is reasonable to believe that the initial investigation was badly mishandled. I think this failed initial investigation speaks to how difficult it can be to solve a case when there is a lot of evidence. The data can become overwhelming to law enforcement. Item number two, what are some of the potential personality traits of Rex Hewerman? Rex has been described as angry, unfriendly, adversarial, fastidious, arrogant, cold, distant, and kind of creepy. According to a man who attended the same high school, Rex was bullied as a teenager. Rex was once forced to leave a whole food store for taking fruit that was put out for children and arguing with store employees who confronted him. Neighbors indicated that Rex was not approachable and he would menace people by chopping wood with an ax in the front yard of his house. He would respond to people greeting him by glaring at them before continuing to chop wood. Rex repeatedly used the services of sex workers. This appeared to be a major part of his life. The internet searches made by Rex make him appear sadistic, and of course the murder part is consistent with that theory as well. Rex appeared to pay attention to detail. He worked diligently to hide his connection to the murder victims. Ultimately, he failed, but he did manage to evade the authorities for over a decade. Rex had a line of work which was very connected to details. He took pride in knowing old building codes. It would appear as though Rex had a few obsessive-compulsive personality traits. He appeared to be preoccupied with details and rules. For example, he was interested in boring building codes and described as fastidious. Rex was rigid and stubborn, and he may have had a miserly spending style. For example, his house was in disrepair, and he allegedly took fruit from a store. The behavior demonstrated by Rex is also consistent with having narcissistic and psychopathic traits. For example, he was arrogant, sadistic, antagonistic, argumentative, irresponsible, and allegedly committed a series of crimes. This takes me to the last item, number three. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. At some point, Rex started obsessing about sexual domination fantasies. He engaged in a lifestyle involving frequent, financially induced, casual, sexual encounters, but this wasn't enough. He committed his first murder after resisting the urge for many years. It was highly satisfying to him, everything he had hoped for. He continued killing. Rex had a particularly dangerous combination of traits which allowed him to be a prolific serial killer. The narcissism and psychopathy gave him the desire to commit the murders, and the obsessive compulsive traits facilitated an attention to detail that assisted him in evading detection. Rex believed that he was intelligent and disciplined enough to commit the murders without getting caught. He was reasonably cautious much of the time and carefully planned his actions. Rex tried to maintain a semblance of a normal life. He was married and regularly went to work. Most people found him to be strange, but did not think that he was a killer. After committing several murders, Rex started obsessing about getting caught. He made numerous searches in order to put his mind at ease, but he did not feel safe. He just kept coming back to that same thought of being arrested. He stopped committing homicides, but continued to employ the services of sex workers. 
he was willing to give up some of his enjoyable activities, but not all of them. This pattern of discontinuing serial homicide is not unheard of. For example, Joseph James D'Angelo, the Golden State Killer, eventually stopped committing murders on his own. Joseph was not arrested until years after his last murder. Rex did not realize that he had already made the mistake that would later lead to his identification. His vehicle was spotted when he arranged another meeting with Amber after she perpetrated a scam on him. His impulsivity led to his undoing. Rex believed that he was justified in committing the murders, or he had forgiven himself. This is why he was able to cry for his lawyer and claim his innocence. In Rex's mind, he is truly without blame. Now moving to my final thoughts. Rex Hewerman laid the foundation for success by learning to be an architect. Unfortunately, he was engineered with dark desires, which paved the way for murder. He went back to the drawing board and constructed a facade to disguise his design flaw. Rex tried to avoid inspection, but his concrete thinking did not create an environment of sustainability. He could not insulate himself from a code violation. Ultimately, Rex became an architect of agony. Those are my thoughts on the case of Rex Hewerman. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.